Stephen Jill here. Hello. Welcome to the Land Academy Show, entertaining land investment talk. I'm Stephen Jack Butella. And I'm Jill DeWitt, broadcasting from sunny Southern California. Today, Jill and I talk about Real Estate Investment 505, your end game. All this week, it's been 101, 202, all the way through 505. This is it. You're past... This long part. past quitting your job. This is the fun part. Yeah, this is where where you're planning. You got you're standing in front of a spreadsheet saying, "I got a bunch of dough in the bank. Everything's going great. I got the right people in place. How am I going to just sort of what's my true do exit do on now? this? Do I want to hand this down to my kids? Do I want to sell part of it? What's what's really the the deal here? We're, am I really going to ever retire? Seven or eight digits a month, uh, a year, month or a year in real estate. Yeah, like we are. Right. And what do I want to do? Do I want to do a podcast and share it with everybody? Right. No, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> do I want to give back? We'll talk about it in a minute. Yep. Before we get into that, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Okay. M asks, title companies are driving me crazy with their long clothes. Yes, that can happen. A uh, few properties I'm buying through a couple of title companies are now in one month wait and counting and still nothing is happening. When you contact them, they're polite and they say, we're still waiting for title report. Lie. Grr. My question for you guys is, what is your strategy to make sure the seller doesn't change his mind in this never ending mm-hmm. wait? Time kills deals. Yeah. I know, I know. They signed the purchase agreement, but believe me, but I believe they can back off from the deal anytime if they want to. That's true. I am thinking about sending the seller check for $300 or so to keep him committed. What do you guys do? Well, I think that we haven't ever had a problem or recently we, in very recent years, I should say, have a problem where uh, a seller backs out. Right. And then they back out and we got to pay them to keep them in the deal or anything like that. I think there's different... Jill, you know what? You're very qualified. What would you do okay. on that? So here's my experience. My experience is a seller doesn't usually back out, the buyer backs out. Yeah. And when I say buyer, sometimes it's me. I mean me. us. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's what we're saying. I've had those where it was just like, you know what? You guys don't have your ducks in a row and I have this money. Basically, when we allocate funds for acquisitions, it's yeah. kind of burning a hole in my pocket. And if it's taking you too long and, I, and, and this is often what happens i'm working on one deal and three more easier ones come along over here guess what you're out i'm doing these three so that's what usually happens in in our world so and i'm never a fan of giving them money just to have them sit there i think that's that's ridiculous now i do i do uh believe in a non-refundable deposit that goes through escrow i'm good with that but just sending them a check or something like that Mm -mm, because that's too easy for them just to go great thanks and still run and you're right i mean the seller and the buyer can really back out at any time. Anybody can change their mind. You know, no one's going to go after the other person. It's just not a thing, you know, and do you really want to spend that time and the money and whatever? And and, and are you even going to win that? Probably not. You know, that's that's the whole this point, even great, though they signed a purchase agreement. This is a great question and it's a real problem. Yeah. And so another thing that I do, though, at this point is... Um, and we're doing it right now, literally today, with some of our House Academy acquisitions. We are all in daily, multiple times a day, in contact with the title agency, yeah. and actually doing their work. It's yep. it's kind That's of a pain a in the advice, rear, Joe. but it's true. Great advice. You know, like the title, we just got back basically like the HUD one and you know all the different things that need to be all the conditions we need to have copies of this copies of that so what we're doing is working with um, we're the buyer for the seller um, we are getting all these things ready for her hey do you need help writing this affidavit we'll do it for you you know and making sure that the title rep because even though you talk to the title person they said I'm calling them today you hang up they don't always call them today so you need to follow up make sure they did call them today and and really I hate to say it, but push them along, you know, and don't just sit back and wait that we've had some too that, you know, do we have an escrow number? Do we have an escrow number? And I'm, we're we're going to blow up their phone. Going through that on two deals right now. Yeah. And we're going to. With the same title agent. And she's been our title agent for a lot of years. Yeah. And I really like her. Then they get busy. I understand there's other deals. So, so that's part of it too is. I hate to do their work, but part of, sometimes I kind of we are kind of doing their work a little bit, but that's what gets it done. I have a bunch of points to make. Title agents, sure. like we have one that's been doing our 
a work, great work for us for years, yeah. but they're still responsible for bringing in new clients, unfortunately. So that when they get new customers and new clients that are investors like us, they want to treat them really well. And, right. and our stuff gets tends to get pushed down to the bottom. Uh, but I'll, And so there's lots of ways to deal with that, and Jill's great at it. But I will tell you, these types of deals where there's no debt then there's no real estate agents are the easiest that a title agent can possibly exactly. complete. Real problems happen with real estate agent for escrow agents. Real estate agents are paying the butt. Lenders are paying the butt. Those yeah. aren't even in any of these deals. Exactly. You're dealing with the buyer and a seller directly, and all the we have a subdirectory. All of us with all the LLC documents and anything that they could ever want. Right. And it goes right to that as soon as we send them the purchase agreement on these larger deals. We send them all those documents. And in right. our case, we don't do it anymore because they have their own subdirectory. Right. With all that. So, what Jill's saying is. Make it as easy as you possibly can. Push them and help smile them. the whole time and send them flowers or That's whatever it takes, exactly. and they'll get your stuff done. And if they don't, like mid deal in this situation, if it's taking what, how many months did he say? I don't know. One month wait. One month. Yeah, I'd get a new. A, a yeah, new it should have been done. I would get a new agent. Should have been done two weeks ago. If they're backed up at title, do the title work for mm-hmm. them. They're not going to be able to write a policy based on that. But what you're going to do is say, right. "I did the title work for you. Here it is. You, you have access. To, with, if you are subscribed with us, you have access to Title Pro 24/7, which is literally, same literally the same database that title agents use. So pulling the lien they're, reports. They're not going to issue it. But what yeah. you're telling the escrow agent is, "Hey, nothing's going to come up. Please right. just order it." We'll exactly. get it done. If I sound animated and angry about this, it's because I am. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Time kills deals. The oh seller's not going to sell it. That's what's the funniest thing. When we say that, I've, I've had that happen to sellers with us. You know what? I feel like saying, too bad for you, but this all took too long. You lost it with us. We're out. You, you just killed your own deal. And it's true. I'll tell you another thing that yeah. personally, and it's probably my personal problem that I have that kills deals for us, is when the seller calls every day. Yeah. Is it done yet? Hey, how you guys doing? I'm just checking to see if you really want to do a close to deal. Why, exactly. why, why isn't this done yet? Yeah. And it's all into escrow, and we've long We're decided. Well, waiting. mentally moved on to deal number six after that. Exactly. Hi, how are you, Jill? Are you really going to close this? Because I, I need the money. I know. That makes me want to say, you know what? No. We're done now. Exactly. And that's okay. Which is silly on my part, because it takes so... It's such a long road to get somebody to where they want to sell like that it's a bummer but it happens <laughs> what it's just nothing to say you have nothing to say because no. you know it's true she's I do. so disgusted with my attitude when it comes to this stuff <laughs> <laughs> it's true i have nothing <laughs> today's topic i really have nothing to add let's transition here okay today's good. topic uh-huh. real estate investment 505 your Yay. end game Ooh, this is this the fun part this is the meat of the show awesome what does it mean to you the end game Oh my gosh. Now, now, it's, now it's like now, liquid fun. Okay, so here's my here's my how I see it. The end game is no matter what path I go, I can't lose. Yeah. I've already got this existing company up and running smoothly. I have the right people in place. Bills are getting paid. It's it's steadily growing every month. Now I can really kind of experiment, go, you know what? I've always wanted to own a bed and breakfast. Or I don't know, whatever it is. Dream I it up. To start a podcast. Well, maybe that. <laughs> Maybe, wait, I have another one. I have a good one. Maybe you're in our community and now you're buying and flipping classic cars. How Yikes. about that one? Yeah. Right? Maybe you're having more babies while flipping cla- classic These are cars. All members Justin. That we have there going through this. <laughs> so, talk about crazy. He's expanding his family and his portfolio, you know. But anyway, now at that point, you can do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, you can, because you, cause you know you can't lose. And that's what's so great for me. Because when you know you can't lose, you can really uh, experiment and try some things like, uh, I'm going to share what we talked about. We've been talking about everything from reinventing a company that we used to have, which was a mint. We used to own a mint. We did. We, we coined our own silver and gold coins. Yep. Where we we sold at it. That. We sold the whole company. Right. And we're long out of the uh, non-compete per- so we're, we're looking thinking at about that. Again. It's a 3% margin business, but you can't lose. Exactly. We're also looking at uh, maybe even opening some kind of a restaurant well, or bar. I'll, or... I'll veto that, but okay. Oh, we're not going to do that up there? <laughs> no. You change your mind? No, but oh. I don't. But anyway. I don't care. Even if it's profitable, I don't want it. Well, there's just, I, no. I guess my point is. We will open a re- restaurant in the light of franchising it. Okay. 
Well, a franchise type restaurant. Okay. What, well, and whatever form that it takes. No, let's have a, a little marital disagreement oh, no. right now about no, this. No, I'm okay. <laughs> no, you're, my point is we're actually thinking of things that are so different from our daily, you know, real estate based core uh, investment uh, business that at the 505, the 500 level, you can think about this stuff. You're no longer working in your own company. So yeah. You have other people. We have That's multiple people who are work who work there. We don't. Exactly. And we get pulled in if there's a real big problem or we get pulled in if there's a real huge success. Well, we know about that before they do. So... That's when, that's what I've always strived for uh, over the years. It's been a while since we've had that. Why? There's, there's no way, better way, before Jill makes has lots of fun on the show. <laughs> In all seriousness, there is no better way to generate wealth for yourself to, than acquisitions. Acquisitions of real estate, acquisitions of companies, uh, generally acquiring things. You can buy your way into success, believe it or not. In startups... You can knock one out of the park, like let's say an Uber. There's IT startups, and we always hear about those, but we never hear about the ones that fail. Right. Startups are tough. And you, if you listen to this, you have a startup or you're, you succeeded at a startup. So exactly. not only are you like a, a very seasoned seasoned and successful entrepreneur, you had went through your own startup. You're at the top of the heap. Yeah. There's a lot of people who That's are good. like CEOs of big companies. They couldn't start a, they couldn't start their own it's car. True. They're not startup people. You're a true entrepreneur. If you took a prop, piece of property, bought it for four grand at the one oh one stage mm-hmm. and parlayed that into millions and millions of dollars every year, which is what we've done. Yeah. So pat yourself on the back because that's how it ends. Exactly. And so everybody talks about exit strategy. You know, this is not, I will admittedly say, this is not the best uh, business to set up to build and then sell. But I'll tell you, in this stage, we have tons of capital and we know a ton of people with way more money than us to do that if we wanted to. So you won. We won. Congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) Here was my point five minutes ago. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, what I was going to say was, um, you know you're at this level when you take a couple weeks off, and not only do the wheels stay on the bus, but you actually kind of made more money because you weren't there messing yeah. with it. When you don't go to work and you make more money, yeah, that's the stage. That's the good. That's the best thing. You look in the all world. the stuff up. You come out of the week and a half haze of vacation, and you look at all the stuff, and it's like, wow. I have the right team. Maybe I shouldn't go back there at all. They don't need me. They don't want me. (laughs) Yeah, they do better when you're not around. Exactly. They have some freedom. It's good. I love that. (laughs) Try to think, okay, so what about about paying it forward? What do you think people should be doing? I I know where where my comfort comfort level is on that, and we decided to do Land Academy. So, and share it and collaborate. And through that, we, we have multiple people who we do transactions with where they just put the money in and we partnership and everybody gets paid out at the end and so yeah. it, that's been great for us and them I I, I can't we have a, sub, a file of all the thank you notes we constantly get I know um, I love that I got one just now thank you baskets shucks I got, I got one just a little while ago I should read that next time is it on your phone it is put the headset down I'll, I'll, I'll cover for you are you serious yeah. you want me to read it real sure. quick here alright we get this stuff every single week can't make this stuff up so land academy itself was our way of actually giving back to this whole thing and i truthfully didn't think it was going to be anything i did not think it was going to end up being popular i figured there'd be 20 or 30 people that understood that buying land rural vacant land or urban land in fill lots was their cup of tea and made it profitable for himself, then it's just exploded. From from day one, it exploded. We had, this is in 2015, we had 25 people sign up the first day and it just hasn't stopped since then. It gets slow around the holidays and that's it. So I've always envisioned, the whole time I was getting to the, to the 505 point, I always knew in the back of my head that this just can't be all about me and money. It has to be all about paying it forward somehow and so it just we just got lucky it, it came it went actually pretty well 
Okay, you ready? Yeah. Okay. This is the perfect way to end this week and end this show. Okay. With the this is a this just came in um, literally uh, two hours ago. And this person obviously knows who he is. Um, I'll I'll just say the first initial is J. Uh, Jill and Steve, good morning. Steve told me we'll probably never hear from you again. So I committed to him at that time that I would get back to y'all and let you know my progress. Hold on. I always say that to, there's certain people that we speak to that join our group in right. right in the beginning where I just know based on their, they're going to kill it based on their long before they got to us, what they were doing for a living and maybe they own a company or, or but they're, you can just tell that they're coming into this thing with the right attitude. And so I always say to those people, never gonna hear. let's enjoy this moment together because you're uh, a few months from now, you're going to do six or seven deals. And then we're just never going to hear from you again. You're going to be gonna, too busy. You're, you're going <laughs> to enjoy your data subscription f- with us and the mail access to the milk mail company. And we're, you know, you're going to go off and make probably make more money than we do. Exactly. This is clearly one of those people. Right. So here, and by the way, here I am literally <laughs> reading this from my phone. So um, I, it's been a while only because I wanted to have tangible results to report. For context, <gasps> oh, I am the guy that sent you the Captain oh. Obvious t-shirts about a year ago. We have Captain Obvious yeah, t-shirts. Yeah, we do. I am oh, Captain thank Obvious. you. You are Captain Obvious. Okay. So here is a quick update. It's not a compliment. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for saying obvious I stuff. Love I, I love it. I love it. I signed up in January 2017. I am the guy the system did not work for. I failed miserably. In 2017, I sent several thousand letters and even did several consulting calls with Steve to make sure I was pricing it correctly. On most mailer campaigns, I got zero offers signed back. After expenses, I did a total of two deals, both profitable, and yet still lost about $10,000. But, dot, 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 I kept at it. Because this is going to make me cry. Okay, here we go. I kept at it because I felt like there was something to this and I just needed to figure it out. I sent just one more mailer in the fall of 2017. That resulted in some decent response and I bought and sold sold in December 2017 my second property. This was a breakthrough. I now have finally completed my first 10 oh deals. Oh my gosh. This is slow for 18 months, but I'm breaking a lot of rules. I'm also doing larger deals, so they're not going to turn as fast. I completely skipped the $500 in the desert phase. Good for you. Okay, you ready on this one? Yeah. First 10 deals, $375,000 in sales, $187,000 in gross profit. That's it. That's our numbers. Current balance sheet is about $250,000, $110,000 in cash, and $140,000 in two properties that are currently for sale. I also have a pipeline of acquisition signed up ready to go. Wow. Wow. My goal is to quit my job, which pays very well. Uh, wow, he has a date. Okay, See how we're organized gonna, he is? Holy cow. He's got, you're going to do this. He's at, Jay, you're he's gonna, at JB. 303. Wow. He's at the 303 level. He's, oh my gosh, sliding into home, sliding into, you know, yeah. home plate here. My goal is to quit my job, which pays very well. On, he has an actual date, September 5th, 2018. At that time, I planned, this is going to make me cry. I'm going <laughs> to call him on that. I'm telling you right now, we're going to have a call Jill's on that call. day, okay? Should, oh, that's a good idea. I'm a, well, I want to talk. At that time, the plan is to have a balance sheet that includes $1 million in inventory, $100,000 in cash, my personal checking account to live on, and most importantly, number three, the knowledge, skill, and confidence that if everything were taken away from me tomorrow and I had to start all over, I am going to cry. Oh my God, you are crying. I could could back it up and know that I could be still independently and financially very successful. All of these are realistic and doable. And all of these are directly contributed to the two of you. And for that, I'm sincerely grateful forever. (laughs) If there's anything I can do for the two of you, please do not hesitate to ask. If you're curious about all the mistakes I made and how I got here, I I'm happy to share. Thanks very much for all you do. All right. You were <laughs> going to talk on that day, and um, we're going to talk after this. So We should interview him on the oh show. Oh, my gosh. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, yeah, we should. I'm going to ask him if we could have him on the show that day. Wouldn't that be yeah. fun? Yeah. So, all right, after I clear up my tears. <laughs> so, um, that's just awesome, and that's... That's this. That's well, you've done it again. It's been another 20 minutes or so listening to the Land Academy, some of which uh, Jill cried for. Exactly. Join us next time where we discuss choosing a property investment niche. 
and we answer your questions uh, posted on our free online community. I lost my <laughs> my thoughts here. Um, go to landinvestors.com. You can post your questions there. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Are you okay? Yeah. It's okay to cry. Oh, thank you. At least you're not. At least I didn't. I didn't make you cry this time. (laughs) You don't. (laughs) You're silly. You never make me cry. (laughs) You don't. You make me aggravate me. (laughs) That's great. (laughs) Well, it didn't take long to get out of that misty state, did it? (laughs) No. You aggravate me. Say that with love. Come on. That's just that's just the facts. Share the fun by subscribing on iTunes or wherever you are listening. And while you're at it, please read us there. We, we are, are Stephen Jill. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property.